Hello everybody. Today we have with us Dr. Rupinda Singh, the Dean and Director of uh, the Swandam Institute of Design. Welcome to another uh, episode of Thoughts on Education, sir. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, starting with the interview, I just like uh, you to give a brief introduction about yourself. Okay. Uh, good morning. My name is Rupinda Singh. I am the new Dean of uh so name is your design my background is i have done my masters from mit and my doctoral work from princeton university before that i used to work with uh, professor bv doshi's office and my undergraduate work is from chandigarh chandigarh college of architect i was trained as an architect and that is and i worked and taught across the globe there places done research and i have fellowships from europe DID and other fellowships, and uh, I have two small books not available in India, and uh, I think that's a good start. Oh, absolutely, been in education for almost thirty years. Sad, huh? but true. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you for your introduction. So, uh, beginning with the interview, since you've had uh, an international exposure. uh i would like to know that the uh, educational institutes uh, that are placed so the systems in india and other foreign countries are structured very differently so uh, in your experience what can be an inbound student gains from the students studying here at your university see i think uh, if i have to talk personally one of the biggest difference is that uh, we tend to be very theoretical and almost infantilizing the subjects here that we will talk in long theoretical introductions and then we will do things that is the normal indian where is abroad they will just throw you in and once you begin to get a sense of things then they will kind of give you the theory yeah, that has been my kind of uh, approach even in india it's hard because faculty who have been trained in years and years and years of doing this work do that the other thing is there is still always that uh, default rote education you know if you look at the class 12th exam and the exams before that we are very rote education based and that fits in very well with our theory exams now even with design we do that rote thing so whereas in the us uh, or abroad depending where you go there is degrees of formality and formality but uh, you know when you go to these countries like us and even australia and uh, new zealand the theory is kind of given a different direction but you are introduced to the problem this dialogue becomes very important there and for example in america you could uh, you don't even call somebody a professor you call them by their first name unless he's very very senior and you respect them for their noble prices all uh, so you don't even that but when you look at places like germany there is a lot of formality you have to call them by their you know full title and there is a distance but still there is the dialogue so we the two things we always instill is we instill dialogue in our school and we instill this hands on direct approach where we kind of skew theory we don't do that kind of thinking uh and that is a start same thing with problems we want to make sure the problems are real and make sense to students by real i don't mean that they are actual that are going to happen in the field but they are real in the sense that they are not the same broad problems that have been taught so for example when osama bin laden was captured i wrote a whole design problem and a uh, for architect chain also a different one for designers where all the duplicates we used to work for osama bin laden you realize they went out of job when osama bin laden is captured and dead so we wrote a whole project on how would you now give new identity or new meaning to the duplicates of osama bin laden so that kind of way when we do things is different the students begin to approach this from their actual world you know that's lovely even the students over here i feel uh, need the international insight so uh, pretty good job there so uh, so i would like to understand that uh, since you said that uh, the curriculum is quite uh, different here and uh, abroad So at Swarnam Startup and Innovation University, you're talking specifically about uh, the Swarnam Institute of Design. How are you making sure that, that uh, you know they have the best practice of the industry? 
look we just over over uh, all the curriculum recently and we are just in the process of i'm also a firm believer that uh, again this has to do with my various exposures but i am a firm believer that curriculum has to become more uh, comprehensive about education there seems to be a lot of things that are thrown around market ready machine ready and all of this but education is once in a lifetime thing you must educate the student in a comprehensive manner they are going to be a citizen of the country too and of the globe so there are four you know foundation of education that i've always emphasized on one is vocation you, know, you should have the skill sets to be able to do the vocation if you are doing design a uh, fashion design then say garment construction you should be able to work as good as a uh, tailor or if you are working in architecture or interior then you are going to work with as good as a carpenter you are drafting or knowing even software all of those are vocational skills you must learn them. so that is your one foundation which is obvious then the second foundation which is very obvious is professional now the tools do not design themselves there is always a kind of bias for tools but they don't design themselves that ability to meld things with tools that ability to use the complete tool set to make things to happen is your professional skill set so i can express a warmth or happiness of a house it's not to do with a carpenter or a, or a mason but that ability is the professional third third foundational uh, leg for us is critical thinking we uh, must think critically and that to me is uh, master nosbaum wrote this must learn to read well read closely read across the lines and cut across what uh, whatever the rhetoric of the argument is um, take fashion for example i am not a expert on fashion so i speak more or less half outside the field but look at it, it even in the best schools in fashion in india that kind of reflective understanding of fashion seems to have disappeared one of the great first essays on fashion is written by york simmel then uh, walter benjamin in his arcades project has a whole section on fashion and sense of temporality and aspects of it because fashion is a term that has been used today is relatively late it is a capitalist term it comes only once a certain industrial problem process begins to run you can fast talk all about vernacular fashion or what but the term itself is that reflects of that critical thinking is at third last and very important and because we are all citizen we are sitting right on right now in the period of pandemic is the ethical issue again sustainability has become big buzzwords there is green washing everywhere but that notion of ethical is also where you sometimes have to sacrifice your own personal well being or good to do the right thing so these four things we make as our foundational aspects of this i am very proud of the fact that over the few last years that i have fashion indian students and who have gone abroad not a single one of us found that he had to retool himself or herself they found that the teachers actually over there seem to match us they they were very complimentary in the way they taught the way these teachers were friendly with them so that also is a kind of for me an emphasis or a kind of endorsement same thing with those who have gone in the profession i've always had compliments from the designer and architects who the, we place students with so we want students like this we don't want students who just know how to do drafting we want students who can pick ideas or who can make ideas who can come back and be our equals so we are very happy about those changes lovely lovely that's great sir uh, wishing you and the institute all the very best for the coming endeavors uh, on that note sir i'm very curious to know that uh, in your personal opinion what do you feel should be uh, swarnam startup and innovation university or swarnam institute of designs top priority over the next 10 years <laughs> 10 years is a big number uh, i think the biggest one is always be flexible for change this is Uh, relatively diff- easy to spouse on but difficult to accept because what happens in and i've seen it personally like we introduced very unique problems in foundation studio about 6 years ago right and those problems in the faculty and I, and i worked with the students and we became very very good at it became to the point that our institutes became a signature piece where other tried to copy us and never managed to do well 
so that kind of relationship with our foundation studio was very very good now we have to uh, come up with uh, that success became our problem you really have to undo your success to be able to become and do something again so that is the first thing academicians are not flexible their sad their heads are always in the sand so that remembering to be able to say all right i'm going to go back and let things happen again that flexibility is very very important so i mean i've done this where we would destroy it in a way our old program and then and what is funny is that uh, once i left some of these institutes they went back to our foundation studio and those have become like the rule of the law so that is one of the things you always have to be fresh because then you also uh, then also you become blind otherwise to the student because you're so taken over by the process that the student is not live at i guess in 10 years time the other thing is obviously going to be technology is going to emerge new possibilities are going to come that is we are very uh, invested in new emerging technologies now we are already training on flow and chuka cats for fashion and we are already a very big proponent of uh, parametrics and uh, design and architecture so we are obviously doing it already but we have to always understand that the student must have some sense of um future proofing so emerging technology is very last and i think this comes out of my mit education uh, and that will happen for the next 10 years continue you have to train your student to learn to learn so throwing them in different ways of thinking making them learn to learn because you know i can't tell you the amount of changes that happened when i was a student uh pencil drafting was everything we were not even allowed what is now called pen pencil drafting or mechanical pencil right if you if you put a eraser on your sheet you have to do this whole sheet i was trained with people who actually had worked with kobozier and other people in the drafting of chandigarh so i know i am old but still and today most students you know don't even draft well or draw well or write well and it's okay so learning to learn is very So, and that goes with your critical thinking yeah absolutely right. so there's there's a phrase that goes that uh, change is the only constant i'm sure you've heard change it is so it, i i feel in times like today uh, we should be rephrasing it to learning is the only constant because you know learning is an ever growing yes. process never ending actually so <clears throat> on this note so i'd like to move to the last part of the interview and uh, requested to give a few suggestions and advices to the current youth as well as the aspiring students to the youth right yes or the aspiring Don't students grow. willing to study design yeah, yeah. at uh, swandam institute of design my first advice is very simple go it said it the youth is wasted on the young uh this is a statement you go it made so stay young stay young forever don't grow old um I think the aspiring student part is the more interesting part. Uh, I do this in my stump entry speech when we have orientation. That the first and most important thing is that design is ninety percent emotional. We in India have trained our students to get things right, right? घर जाते हो तो माँ पूछती है कि पापा आने वाले हैं पता हो तो मेरे क्या नंबर हैं? बच्चा कहता है मेरे आठ नंबर अस्सी नंबर सेंट नंबर आए हैं डिजाइन so i have 80% marks so mama ke the theek hai i will make something good so that papa is not angry that you got 80% instead of 90% instead right so uh, <laughs> design is the most you have to learn to make mistakes you have to learn to make mistakes and you have to be happy to make mistakes and to make a fool of yourself so for example i have an exercise it's been a couple of years since i've done it where i would pull a chair and say anybody who can stand on the chair and uh, narrate an incident which uh, on which we can you know pull your leg for next four five years you will make a good design and that kind of ability to take your emotional aspects out of design and to be cheerful about that is very important second for aspiring students the important uh, trick is and this is a rule of thumb is reframe the problem so if you are asked to make a spoon and you design to make a spoon Then you're going to get the same kind of oval shape and a handle, and you know you're going to turn the handle a bit. You're going to make the oval shape a little bit thinner. But if you reframe the problem to that, I am going to create a 
food delivery system it is going to pick the food from the plate and it's going to go into my mouth you know you might find a variation on the uh, on on what is the chinese thing called yeah? uh, the chinese takes now so you can make a variation on that you can make a variation on for that reframing of the problem. chopsticks you're talking about right so you can that reframing the problem is uh, very important uh so the thing i always told my students if you want to be a designer is your de- design is always about the human about the relationship you can talk in terms of fashion interior architecture and now that fancy term ux right design is about always the human behavior so if you watch how students how people hold hands how an old couple comes together and you know they are together how they sit on a corner how a young girl and a boy sitting in the garden make sure where they sit we actually used to have this exercise for architecture and interior design students that you would send them to look at these aspiring couples or couples how they sit in the garden and then you have to make a rule book for date and they would sit and watch even the old couples how they will make sure that what is on the back side and you know you will not find young couples sitting behind the bush they will sit in front of the bush that kind of defensive position that so us design is always about this whether you are uh, washing your hands in the washing machine and seeing how it gets dirty because the corners don't get clean or you are watching people hold the hands or you finding a couple fighting or a boyfriend is pulling at the girl's hemline of a skirt because it is too short they is these are your golden opportunities the whole world become your theater that you can actually enjoy so these i think are the ways to go about you have to be fearless you have to be willing to make mistakes it is a lot of hard work and pleasure if you enjoy the hard work and you have to learn to see the world in different new ways absolutely sir thank you thank you so much for your response those were uh, indeed some motivational uh, words from you yeah. i'm sure our uh, audience is going to find that uh, quite uh, informative and uh, thank you for such an intellectual session sir on this note i'd like to conclude the interview uh, that was dr rupinder singh the dean and director of swarnam institute of design thank you so much for your time sir thank you it was a pleasure talking to you same here sir